He's a Korean guy. I don't know if he's in Japan. But he is rejecting these claims that his characters are sexist. Now, you can see the character here. Um, I'll go ahead and bring up, you know, a bit of the trailer here that, that they've got going. It's called um, Stellar Blade. You're basically this Japanese warrior woman. It's an RPG. I don't know much about the game other than the fact that they've designed her. Now, this guy... In interviews, he's gone ahead and said, you know, we're focusing on the backside of this character because that's what you look at all the time. And, you know, he, he's got no shortage of inspiration from that angle, let's just say, because this is what this guy does. Um, but the feminists, and yes, the feminists are still out there for some things. They, they permeate through video games, it seems. They are still... Being like, this is a sexist character, right? I play Stellar Blade for the plot, this person says. And like, oh my god, it's a CGI woman. On the surface of it, you're accusing people of, of wanting to look at cartoon women. Like, is this a serious gripe in your life that you don't want nerds to be able to look at <laughs> cartoon women? Now, this is the real woman here. So, their, their argument that... This is a sexist thing to do to design a woman this way. It pretty much goes out the window when it's a real woman. Because, you know, feminists love to do this claim where they say it's unrealistic body body types, right? And unrealistic and unattainable things. But when you are using an actual person, you can't really argue that. Like, if a, if you're calling, like, a, a, a video game sexist... Um, What's one that they, uh, Laura Croft, and in the new Laura Croft, you just literally use Angelina Jolie, who is in the movie. You can't really say, well, this character's sexist because of the way she looks. It's actually just a real person. It's not some weird depiction of a woman that's cartoonish, right? And and here's the body scan and the, um, you know, the motion capture they're doing of this girl. And there's there it is the finished product. So it's really weird that they're they're claiming this because it's modeled after a real woman. And again, this is the woman here. She goes by some weird name. I don't know her real name. Love Zenert. But as you can see, she's a very obviously real person. Now there's a guy who was so against this. He he's so hurt by this game, and and his name's Kareem jo Kareem Jovian. He seems to be some sort of video game journalist. But this guy is so hurt by this, he's got 1.3 million views on this video, that he is going around crusading that this is sexist. It's 2024 here, and this is a guy hit, hitting the streets of New York to try to prove that a video game character in a, in a video game is sexist. One of the more desperate things you're going to see all year, and we're only in February an adult man going around asking women in New York with green hair, and we'll see other dyed haired people. And he's, he's like, isn't this sexist? Does this even look like the girl? The Stellar Blade! She looks 14. And with the side ponytail too, girl. She needs a bow. She looks like she's 16. Oh, hell no. It looks nothing like her. It's like two different people. It's perfectly fine to have an animation style, especially in a right. game. But when you're appropriating someone else's image mm -hmm. and then changing <laughs> it, it becomes an issue. She appropriating somebody else's image and then changing it as if they don't have this girl's permission. I would like to remind everybody watching that this game isn't out yet. <laughs> this guy is he's showing them pictures on a piece of paper of this character and be like, can you believe this good, this character in this game? And as you'll notice, he's asking unattractive women and gay guys. She needs a little bow and she's on her way she in to middle school. I just don't get her at all. Like that nose. That nose is very different. Yeah, that nose is definitely not. So two obese women sitting at a skate park or by a fountain of some some sort are getting triggered by a cartoon woman. That's what that's the reality. And this is the this is the venture this guy is on. Asian, that's she's Asian. They took a white woman and supplemented some white woman DNA into this girl uh, to make her a little more white. Cause that is not what I just saw. She just looks bland to me. How old do you think this character looks? A lot younger. I don't know, like they took away like what was unique about her. If you're working on the physics of the way her body moves rather than the physics of the actual game, which you can see in there does not look great, uh, that's, that's <laughs> how you know that you've messed up. Oh, that's how you know you've messed up. If they're working on the physics of the character in the game, 
And you can see by the screenshots that I've printed off here that the physics aren't very good. Video game, red haired, dyed British girl expert on games. You can see that they haven't done a good job here. What is this guy doing? Does anybody know? Act, like, does this guy have any friends? Do you know any guys like this? Did Do you know? Like, th this is what liberalism is. And forget if you're a Republican, Democrat, whatever you are. But nobody is, no guy is actually a liberal. Not in real life. It's all a show. No person, no guy that you've ever met with guy friends or that plays video games has ever thought, you know what, this character in this game that I don't have to play, it's a very big internet out there, and you'll never see it if you don't play it. This character in this game is sexist, and it's so sexist that I'm going to print out screenshots of this game, which hasn't come out yet, and go around New York, Central Park, or something like that, and, f and, and find women and virtue signal to them and say, hey, don't you agree that this is sexist, what they're doing here? You've got one girl saying it's racist, even though, you know, it's Asian people who made it and scanned an Asian woman. You've got other women saying that the physics don't matter. And you've got guys saying, well, you're misappropriating her, her likeness. That's it. This is a legal argument. Seems like they're over-sexualizing her. He's with... Listen to this. Did I? Did I? Did we Next actually up. see that? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Seems like they're over sexualizing her. Yeah, definitely. Over they're over sexualizing her. He's standing next to a woman with a mullet who who's dressed in, you know, what looks like a dress shirt and a tie. Over sexualizing her. Stellar Blade. That's the title of a game that would do this. <laughs> That's the title of a game that would do this. I think it's just men that's never touched a woman in their life not knowing what the fuck they look like. And so they're like, this is what women in my video games always look like. So why are we changing it? It's like, because it's not real, bro. You're living in a fantasy. Wake up. This isn't the Matrix. It's not real. A girl, an obese girl with green hair says it's not real. This is the argument. And this guy knows this. He stands there and he's like... Oh yeah, say it, sister. <laughs> Screaming from the rooftop. He's sitting, standing there knowing that this is based off a real woman, but it's not close enough. We haven't, we haven't made the 3D rendering of this woman close enough. I'm going to stand up for women. Now, I'm going to throw some other things out there, and you're not going to know what side I'm on, except for this part's actually hilarious. So this company that he works for, the uh, the game developer, and we'll get to him in a second, but he works for this company called Shift Up. And I think it was last year. We're trying to get a date on this. August 2023 of some kind. They were accused of firing women for being feminists. And this is hilarious. This is a woman. Her account doesn't exist anymore. A screenshot of what she said. Boycott Stella Blade, which is not a, not a beer. It's supposed to be Stellar Blade. The company that made the game, Shift Up, removed the work of two women because they were, in all caps, feminist. I'm a victim and former employee of this game company. So allegedly they fired two feminist women for having a problem with the way these games are made, which makes no sense because this company and this guy, you know, let, let's jump over to this guy's profile. He's got an, an anime profile picture. He's got an anime banner picture. Excuse me. He's an illustrator, game developer. And this is his media page. Reminder that this is his media page. And these are the things you can see without, you know, seeing what's age restricted. So he's got some animes here. He's even got some more animes. He's even got pictures of women that are, you know, anime on real women, it looks like. It's hard to tell these days with AI. Lots of restricted stuff. Lots of anime. A lot more. This is a buff anime girl eating spaghetti or something more anime maybe some clips from some movies or something a controller and more and more restricted content and anime so obviously you kind of know what you're getting with this guy and does this woman you know the green-haired gargoyleish woman have a point in saying you know this is what men who don't get women are fantasizing about yeah 
it pretty much is. That is what, I mean, I'd have to imagine the reason why he makes this stuff. And he went out and made comments. He said, I don't think it should be realistic. I think this is an adult game, so you can't really say that it can't be for, um, for adults. And you can't really sit, tell me what to do when it's adult content. I don't want to see somebody who's who looks like me. I want to see something that's better than me. All these arguments people make for media. And, and of course, there's a point there to be made that obviously he wants to see this and people who play that game would like to see that. But on the other hand, you could pretty much, it's safe to assume, of course we don't know, but it's safe to assume that this woman, she thinks sex work is real work and she thinks only fans is a valid way to make an income and should be respected. So it's really contradictory these viewpoints where you say these uh these Korean this Korean guy Kim Hyung Tae is his name this Korean guy shouldn't be able to make this game or it's bad of him to make this game but at the same time a man could be a woman and take her place well whilst looking like a stereotypical woman to the best of his ability of course or women should be able to do sex work and do stripping and do pornography, but we can't have people making their own versions of that. You see what I'm saying? It's bad for a guy to want to fantasize about something like this, but it it, it but the real woman is allowed to do this, and a guy pretending to be a woman is allowed to do this. So, so this is ba- the only reason for this is because it's something they can't control. They can't control video game players and video game developers overseas in Japan and South Korea for making a game that they want to make. But they can control you saying this this guy looks like a woman, or they can say you can't say anything about these people doing their own like amateur. Only fans sort of stuff. You can't criticize that, but it's only because that's stuff that's within their realm of control. They own it. They they have their drag bars. They have their their um, you know foot fetish websites and and only fans. But something that's like operated by men who get to decide what they want to do with it, they can't have this. And this is you know she says this is lonely men doing this. It very very well may be true, but this is what a lonely woman does. Something that doesn't include her that she can't control, she lashes it out at that because she can't control it. She needs control. If she can control what you can watch and like, then all of a sudden she becomes a commodity, right? If she can say, you're allowed to look at the the guys who have the, have their penis chopped off and you're allowed to look at them and, and think they're attractive women, even though we all know they aren't. Um, you're allowed to look at that and um, you have to celebrate me doing my internet uh, amateur pornography sort of thing. You have to look at that and I have to be applauded for that. I have to be applauded for being an obese woman. I can control all that and all of a sudden I'm a player in the marketplace. You see what I'm saying? If you control the marketplace, then, then you can hoist yourself up to be a cash cow in it. But if all of a sudden you get these men, these disgusting pigs, and um, uh, probably oppressors, probably racists, right, over there in, in South Korea, like she said, they've just taken this woman that doesn't exist from the Matrix and they've whitified her, then we can't have that. We can't have them making their own decisions because all of a sudden, green-haired woman with giant earrings hanging out with a 400-pound lady in the park, all of a sudden, we can't compete. We can't compete against your cartoons because it's unrealistic. That's what she's saying. Is like you're making something unrealistic that I can't compete with, even though it is a real thing. So you need to. Your field is over here. You can only deal with uh, transgenders, the fatties, the women doing pornography. That's these are your choices. So all of a sudden, I'm in play here. If you start going over here, where it's a uh, uh, anime women who actually scanned it out of real women and, you know, women who aren't 600 pounds. That's unfair. That's oppressive. That's racist. That's sexist. It's all these other things. Patreon.com. Perfect segue to Patreon, you guys. Perfect segue. Patreon.com is where you can find the latest bonus podcast every single week. As you can see there, we're talking about Bud Light on that podcast we're talking about a serious chat with Uncle Hat, uh, Uncle Hack, a few days ago. That's exclusive to Patreon right now. We're talking about um, the full bonus podcast with John Doyle, 
Red Eagle Politics, and Vince Dow, superstars all across the world. And we're also talking about podcasts with Anomaly. And of course, you get advanced screenings of the streeters that I do and stuff like that. The comedy will have another one of these in a couple weeks exclusively on Patreon ahead of its release uh, weeks in advance. This one's been up for four or five, four days now. It's not coming out till this Wednesday. So patreon.com slash uopod. We're growing every single week. So we need your guys' support. As I said off the top of the, the show, we got demonetized just like minutes in. And we have to challenge every demonetization and with that comes obviously no earnings from youtube so we rely on patreon to keep this podcast going otherwise we are literally if we just do it like a liberal thing we are literally going to die if you don't subscribe to the patreon this week that's basically the long and short of it turn it up jordan